welcome to the Saki de Spa Francorchamps. It is the roller coaster of motorsport, and it's the third weekend of the season in the GT4 European Series. Race one on Friday afternoon with beautiful clear skies starting to be littered with cloud. It is unlikely to break over the course of this first race of the weekend. But then again, it is Spa Francorchamps. I'm Jake Sanson, beside me, Bruce Jones. We are ready for another thriller. In the first four races of the year, we've had four different manufacturers from four different teams win the races. Could we have a fifth? There is every possibility, Jake. We hope not to talk about the weather. We're going to talk about fantastic racing. What a chock full grid of cars. Extra cars drawing GT4 European for this event. Why wouldn't they? Cars down from the Scandinavian series as well to take part because this is the most fantastic racing circuit. And one look down on the grid and the, the array of different manufacturers just shows the sheer strength of numbers here and of GT4 as a concept. Yes, indeed. There are 60 GT4 cars on the grid for this one. And this is the leading car from our visitors from Scandinavia, the GT4 Scandinavia leader Emil Skalas in the Toyota Gazoo Racing Sweden car. Gemma Scott is down on the grid with Rafa Racing Club president Rafael Martinez. He must be very excited ahead of this one. Well, I'm joined now by Rafael Martinez of Rafa Racing Club. What a great place this is here in Spa and the atmosphere already this weekend feels so special, doesn't it? It is. It's quite, you know, quite special. My first time here for an actual race. I did a couple of testing days here and I was just blown away by it. But being here and seeing you know, the whole grid and how big the crowd is and all the excitement around it, it's pretty, you know, pretty special. Have you had much time to get down and visit the famous Eau Rouge complex? I did. So I actually went earlier to do it. I'm actually racing in the McLaren Trophy myself. So I did get to drive it. And that's just incredible, like nothing I've ever driven. Uh, but I did go up there and looked at it and just seeing the cars come up. And you know, even just looking at it from the bottom, from the top and picturing yourself doing it, it's like there's no way I actually do that because it looks so impressive. But it's incredible. So really excited for this race here getting going and really you know, excited about the partnership with the uh, GT4 Europe. Absolutely, and it's a mega GT4 grid as well. Yeah, it's massive. It's you know, it's, it's huge, and I can't wait to see what turn one looks like going up. I mean, it's just going to be absolutely wild, like nothing I've ever seen. Thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a real honor and a pleasure to come into the spa Francorchamps circuit for the first time. Just like Rafael Martinez, I'm a first-timer. Bruce, you've been doing this for time immemorial. There is something quite special about this place. Every single corner around the circuit is something special. But just hearing from uh, Rafael Martinez there, that first time you look at Eau Rouge riding up to Radion, whatever you look at at television is flattened. You get here in the flesh, or even better, you try and walk up the slope alongside the circuit, and that gets a bit of sting in your cars. Now, who's going to be quick? Just seeing Antoine Leclerc down there on the grid, and he's uh, very well placed. Fourth on the grid at the Code Racing Alpine. And uh, some great looking cars, the Toyota Supra as well, very, very sleek down there. But just look, every single car seems to be from a different manufacturer. In front of the Alpine, we've got a Porsche and then an Aston Martin, an Audi, and on it goes. Yeah, we've had four different manufacturers, as we mentioned. This is the brand that is on pole position, but it's not the team that's in pole position. This is the speed car number three of Benjamin LaRiche, who is as all, always partnering with Robert Consani. So they're going to be there from the second row of the grid. Um, meanwhile, Christophe Amont is going to be having an interesting run from pole position for the Santa Luc Junior Team Audi. Gemma Scott is with him. Christophe, il y a une super ambiance ici à Spa ce weekend. Oui, c'est euh, génial puisque automatiquement c'est le week-end des 24 heures de Spa, donc on partage la magie du GT3. Donc ça, ça va être ça va être génial. Grégory nous a fait un, un super chrono pole overall. Donc euh, on va on va tout donner. Just a quick translation for our English uh, listeners there to say that it's a great atmosphere here and a great pleasure for you to be sharing the grid with the GT or sharing the venue with the GT3 race here with the 24 hours. But for you to be on pole, a real honor. So it's a uh, super course here. 55 voitures derrière? Même 60, oui, c'est ça, 60 voitures. Euh, on, euh, la course va être longue. On, on sait que la dégradation n'est pas facile avec l'Audi, donc euh, il va falloir gérer en deuxième partie de course. Merci, bon courage. Merci just uh, say there's 60 cars on the grid and uh, it's not going to be easy here with the Audi. That doesn't need much translation. 60 cars. It is a bumper, mammoth, super grid of racing cars. And this one is hoping to actually get to the finish of its second race this year. Victor Weyrich in the number 74 Racing Spirit of Le Mans Aston. Unfortunately, so far this season, they, their culture appears to be win it or bin it. They have only finished one race this year, which was race one at Paul Ricard. However, they did win it. 
Indeed they did. Extreme circumstances down there, extreme conditions. Now, of course, what is the first corner on the circuit? It's a hairpin, a right-hand hairpin. It's last source. 60 cars, 30 rows, looking ahead. A short blast up there. So for Christoph Hamel, he's really going to be hoping that his teammate Gregory Gilver, not only on pole, but in a pro-am combination, will get in there first, and the rest of the race will sort itself out. So we heard from the speed car Audi team last time out in Paul Ricard. Robert Consani in that car is with Gemma Scott. Robert, super tranquille pour l'instant. On, on attend le début. Ouais, c'est pas mal. C'est bien d'être à Spa sous un beau soleil comme ça, avec une température agréable. D'habitude, quand on vient ici, il y a toujours de la pluie, un gros déluge, et c'est toujours incertain au niveau du choix des pneus. Là, là, c'est plutôt facile. Just saying there, what a pleasure it is to be here in Spa underneath the sunshine because usually we are used to the rain. But uh, on regarde les nuages là, je pense que on va bien maintenant. On attend quoi dans le premier virage? On attend que ça se passe bien. Euh, je pense que il faut faut être tranquille, même si on perd une ou deux places au premier au premier tour, c'est pas très grave. La course est longue. Euh, il va falloir bien gérer et manager les pneus. Il faut espérer qu'il n'y ait pas de safety car et, et que tout se passe bien. Merci bien, bon courage. Bye bye. Just saying there that you need to be careful down into turn one. If they lose one or two places, it really doesn't matter because the race is long and uh, they just need to manage the tyres and hope there's no safety car. Thanks, Gemma. Always very good to hear from the drivers just as they're about to get started. This is the number 42 car. We heard from Christophe Hamon. The car is being started by Gregory Gilbert of the Santaloc Junior Team Audi. And this is uh, going to be an interesting one because this is one of the squads that has yet to win uh, a race so far this year. However, they have had plenty of uh, good speed and pace, so it could be interesting to see how they're able to get it together. They've always had a fast car underneath them. They haven't been able to score that many points, unfortunately. They've had a lot of bad luck coming into this season. However, this is a good opportunity for them to turn that form around. Well, it's quite staggering when you look up the grid, a high shot from uh, above the uh, pit building. The camera has to pan around, pan around, pan around to get to the front. So if you're starting up at the very, very fast front end of the grid, it is the right place to be. But let's go back down to the grid and hear from Davide Miloni, Car 53 W&D BMW. Just caught up with David, walking down from the back of the grid. He's starting at 55th position. It's going to be a challenge. Yes, it's glassy. We have a lot of work to do right now, so let's enjoy and make uh, some uh, great overtakes. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a second-generation racer from uh, the Republic of San Marino, staunch BMW supporters over the years. But those at the front, they've just got to try not to lose any places, and then the field will stretch out. But there are so many places you can overtake. Some people may choose Eau Rouge on the first lap. The wise ones would be more concerned about getting a better exit through Radio and carrying their speed all the way up the hill. And it is a hill up to Les Combes at the top, and then turning, hopefully, up the inside into that right-left flick. Now, this is one of the cars that could end up becoming the fifth different manufacturer to win in five races. The Elite Motorsport McLaren has definitely been working very hard over the course of its first two weekends. We obviously saw a brilliant performance last time out from Jack Mitchell and Will Jenkins. They managed to get two top 10 finishes, a fifth place for Radekin and Emson last time out. So that could be an interesting one. But it's uh, unique to see a pro-am in pole position. Of course, the Pro-Am Cup has been very hotly contested between the two crews. Santa Luc Junior Team Audi number 42 and the Code Racing Alpine. They have both had two wins over the course of the victories. Santa Luc Junior Team Audi seems to be very good at winning race one. The Code Racing Alpine very good at winning race two. So if they continue the pattern, then that title fight, which is only 10 points apart, is just going to continue to be intense. Now, of course, if people are new to GT4 racing, they, we ought to tell them one thing. The driver who qualified will be starting this race and handing over in the second half uh, to driver two. And then tomorrow's race uh, will be the reverse. The grid position set by driver two, and, so, and then they will start, driver two will start race two. So we get a very, very different mix. And across the course of the season, the best average is really, really what counts in the end. You can have fabulous results set by driver one, for example, but that's the nature of pro-am racing. So it is about being consistent as well as fast. But right now, it's about being in the top 10. It certainly is. So it's going to be a fascinating situation for the competitors. And it will be a really exciting battle for all of the contenders out there. That is what 60 cars on the grid looks like as they fly around the circuit. This is going to be a phenomenal race battle. So they go on to the formation lap. It's going to be a rolling start as always. But let's talk you through this incredible field of cars and drivers. 60 is going to be an absolutely amazing battle for position. 
What we have got is a couple of Pro-Ams right up at the sharp end in amongst the Silvers. The leading Scandinavian GT4 Pro-Am is the Toyota Gazoo Racing Sweden car of the former KZ2 European karting champion, Emil Skadas, who has converted to cars very, very quickly indeed. Did a fantastic job at Paul Ricard and is looking good to do so here at Spa-Francorchamps as they drop through Eau Rouge and up to Radion. Let's go through the grid. The Santa Doc Junior Audi is alongside the JSP Aston Martin on the front row of the grid. Then the Speed Car Audi alongside the Code Racing Development Alpine on the second row of the grid. Benjamin Lariche versus Antoine Leclerc in the first stint. Then the Mirage Aston alongside its Racing Spirit of Le Mans counterpart. Then the WNS Porsche and the Elite McLaren, both hoping to become the fifth different brand to win in five races. Then the championship leaders, Hopper Racing by Bonk in ninth position in the BMW the Allied Porsche is next. Then outside the top 10, the L'Espace Benvenu BMW is 11th, and the Century Porsche Ticino car is 12th. The first of the Boris Cernet BMWs, Enzo Julier, alongside Emil Scanas in the Toyota Gazoo Racing Sweden. Then the Racing One Aston Martin, Andreas Backman will start it, and then Jamie Day in the Mirage Aston is next up. The east side Mercedes AMG and the CSA Racing Audi. Then the x wheel Racing Toyota that won brilliantly in the wet last time at Paul Ricard, alongside the BWT, M uh, BWT Mucha Mercedes. Then the Otto Porsche, alongside the elite McLaren of Josh Rattigan. The Overdrive Porsche is beside the second Santa Doc Junior Team Audi. Then the GBA Racing Aston of Bailey Boysen and the Racing Spirit of Le Mans Aston of Akilvard Vendra. The Auto Sport Alpine is alongside the SRS Sorg Rentsport Porsche. And then the Santa Doc Junior Team Audi of Paul Petit. He's beside the Sorg Rentsport Porsche of Ivan Akelchik. Then the Avatar Porsche, Alban Baruti, alongside the MBLR BMW of Victor Boubain. The new bridge Aston Martin is back, Gus Bauer's behind the wheel, and the Alpha McLaren of Daniel Roos is next up. Then the NM Mercedes of Stanislav Safranov and the Borison BMW of Tom Edgar from Northern Ireland. The CMR Toyota is beside the V8 Racing Chevrolet. The WNS Porsche of Gustavo Javier is beside the full motorsport Audi of Lonnie Martin. Then the Team Spirit Racing Aston Martin of Lauren Stegman is beside the NM Mercedes of Alexandra Papadopoulos. Then the HES Events Aston of Timothée Bure beside the GBA Aston of Florent Grizo. The Code Alpine is next up, Sandro Perasuti to start the race. Then the Century Ticino Porsche of Niki Lutvilla. The NM Racing Mercedes of Philippe Faber of Spain and the BCMC Mercedes of Marcel Lenertz. The Allied Porsche of Oscar Lind Christensen and the Overdrive Porsche of Ivalo Zonev. Then the second of the BWT Mucke Motorsport Mercedes of Emil Gjordrum beside the Toyota Gazoo Sweden car of Axel Bengtsson, the AGS Aston of Mike Parisi and the WND BMW of Massey Trisolvi. Then the Gerarassen Porsche of Gustav Bard beside the full motorsport Audi of Noam Abramchik. The Autosport Alpine comes next, that's Saman Tiemann alongside the RMS Mercedes of Hakan Richnas and then filling up the grid, the final two, the Toyota Gazoo of Rasmus Hedberg and the Alpine of Jean-Mathieu Leandri. 60 cars. What an amazing race it's going to be. Well done, Jake. You got through those before the cars came back round to the grid. <laughs> Take a seat and uh, have a rest. But what an array of cars. So many different manufacturers. And here at spa Francorchamps this weekend, we had the first sight of the GT4 Ford Mustang that is surely going to be joining this grid in 2024. So exciting times. But for the drivers at the moment, it's a time to focus as the field uh, feeds its way around this amazing circuit. Conditions, as we heard, uh, down from Robert Consani on the grid. We often have La Grande Deluge. It looks though for this uh, race, maybe not so much tomorrow, but this race, we will take these perfect early summer conditions here at Spa Francorchamps. Pick a favourite, you have to really say, barring disasters, you're not likely to win from outside the top 10, but then that's where you bring these uh, groups where you've got a very well balanced driver lineup. And uh, the driver window, the pit stop window, will be 25 minutes into this race to 35 minutes. So the drivers have to make their pit driver change in that time. Apart from Alban Verruti, he was driving all on his lonesome, but uh, 59 crews have two drivers. He will not be getting out of the car. He'll be waiting a minimum time at a standstill and get going. But uh, let's stand back. Gather our breath a little bit, Jake, and get ready for the action. It's going to be thick and fast. And of course, up into La Source, everyone fancies their chances. 60 GT4 cars heading into La Source. This is going to be a real sneak preview of what we're going to get to see in the CrowdStrike Spa 24 hours tomorrow at 4.30 local time. This is going to be a really exciting charge forward. And all of the cars ready to rock and roll. We had four different teams and manufacturers winning in the first four races of the year. At Monza race one, it was the Rishan Consani in the speed car Audi. Then 
and the second race, it was Michael Schrey and Gabriele Piana in the Hoffa Racing by Bonk BMW. Then we came to Paul Ricard, and Victor Weyrich and Konstantin Lachenauer finally got the job done in the racing spirit of Le Mans, Aston Martin. And then in the pouring rain, Michael Schrey and Gabriele Piana denied a second win. They did come second, though, as Antoine Forti and Etienne Shelley did a fabulous job in the x whip Toyota. Their homecoming is going to be a tough one to replicate, but it could be a very interesting race off the start. So we're going to see some very exciting battles, that is for sure, as the cars are now coming into position, ready for an exciting charge forward. You'll see a lot of overtakes around this place. You'll see a lot of great battles as well. We have two Pro-Am crews in the top six, three in the top ten. The leading GT4 Scandinavia guest car is 14th on the grid for ML Scadas in the Toyota Gazoo Sweden. And there's a lot of drivers, a lot of cars that are going to need to charge their way back through the field after a difficult qualifying. This is definitely going to be rock and roll rumble racing in GT4. Ready, we come out of the final turn and the leaders are coming over for the GT4 European Series race, powered by Rapper Racing. It's green and go, off to the first corner, up to La Source, and already a couple of cars shuffling the deck as they come off the final turn, but it's a perfect start for the Aston. It's a brilliant launch forward and into the lead they go as the field storms their way into La Source. Is everybody going to make it through, pointing in the right direction? So far, so good for the first 30 or so, but there's still another 30 to come through and they are still scrabbling away, trying to mix up those first couple of positions. It's a terrific start up front though, as it's the Aston Martin of Florian Riche, who has come forward in fantastic fashion. Riche is out in the lead of the race. Benjamin Larish has put the speed car out into a relatively safe position as they come through. A couple of drivers kicking up the grass as they come up over the top, and down the Kimmel straight up to Lecom. Pick a favourite. It is already a big charge forward as Gregory Gilbert is trying to take back the lead. Very interesting start. It looked like uh, the number three Audi was going to gain positions, but it actually, in turn, lost about four. That's back to Robert Consani. Sorry, Benjamin the driving that car. has fallen down to seventh, but what a start from uh, Florian Brichet in the lead of the race. That JSB competition, Aston Martin. First two making a break, but the real sort out is just outside the top ten. You can see them say, go down the hill, the highest point on the circuit, dropping down. But so far, full marks for being competitive, but not rubbing bodywork or going off into those gravel traps. There's been a couple of moments on the grass, a couple of moments on the gravel, but the racing drivers have behaved themselves on the first half of this spa francorchamps circuit. They now drop down through the two gauche left-handers. Fabulous run as they continue to squabble away. Just a couple of drivers trying their chances on the first lap. But this is a perfect start as there is the V8 Chevy. He's keeping himself to himself on the first lap there, Kenny Hesemans. But this is absolutely textbook. This is what real motor racing looks like. And diving up the inside, that is the 204 Porsche trying to move forward and make up a couple of places there on the McLaren trying to dive through. That is Gulberg, one of the Scandinavian visitors, going wheel to wheel with Josh Radikin in the McLaren and coming out on top of it. Yeah, and someone in the background of the shot getting kicking up the dirt in the gravel and again as the car, cars go through Kirk, Paul Frey, this is the point. They're turning right, they're starting to climb back towards the top end of the circuit and uh, if you lose your momentum there, you're going to be hung out to drive. And this is neat, this is tidy. And what a great start from Florian Brichet to get ahead of Gregory Gilbert. Of course, Gilbert running in the brown cars up front. But everywhere you look, know, people are ducking and diving, but they're being sensible into the bus stop for the first time. It's still that Aston Martin at the lead from the Audi. So uh, chalk this one up to Florian Brichet, and of course he's handing over to his brother Julian uh, Brichet, and uh, they've got it under the gantry, up to their source for the second time, the first time at full racing speed, heavily on the brake, but Jake, those first two cars have made a tiny bit of a break, and in third place, we know they're in for a good result, Victor Weyrich, this is the car that doesn't often finish, but as you say, it's win it or bin it. And not they encouraging that, of course. Not in the oh, big tax slapper from the Borison Automotive BMW. That was also Julier in what was a blue car, is now a white one. Just got a bit of a tax slapper on the throttle, but he managed to get off the throttle in time. And that's two by two, hurrah, twice over through Eau Rouge and into Radion. Two very brave drivers. Michael Schrey is having a little bit of a moment there, going up the hill and dicing with his opponent. Looks like a little bit of body damage as well to the left front of the Audi, but that shouldn't compromise pace. 
but fabulous. I'll tell you, one of the stars of the opening lap, though, was Hendrik Still, came up from eighth on the, on the starting grid, and now puts himself in sixth position for the time being. Michael Schrey currently getting held up there by the fast-starting Emil Scaras. Safety car, safety car on track, so something has come a cropper then, either at the end of the lap or the beginning of it. I was just about to say that we've got uh, all of the 60 starters through. We didn't, no, no, no Abramovic. Car number 45 hasn't come round. That uh, would have been in 59th position. Oh, yeah, there That's is. the full motorsport Audi there. It is facing so close to the end of the lap, but uh, not quite made it. That's just on the approach to the source. And the other car that hasn't come through is Simon Termag, car number 110, Autosport GP Alpine. So Paul Kohab would not be having a race. Yeah, poor Noam Abramchik doing a perfect job all the way through the first lap, and then it all comes unstuck right at the final turn. So uh, very unfortunate. But yes, no Simon Timan at all. So we uh, didn't really see him come through. Now, let's try and pick out what has happened. Oh, there's the little bit of a rub there. And, oh, it's getting a little bit messy. Big damage there, too. Now, that's going to be the sister car to Alexander Harkvig. That's the other Allied Racing Porsche. Well, Noam Abramovic was uh, just ahead of that, not close enough to have contact with the uh, Allied Racing Porsche, but someone else gave him a push and a shove. He had to go wide over the curbing and spun round, but uh, there is a Porsche, not how it left the pit lane before this race. But then again, 60 cars trying to get around one lap and get into the bus stop. It was inevitably going to be contact, but uh, I would say generally the standards have been fantastic at the start of this race, but the safety car is out. Shouldn't be too long, hopefully, for that to be cleared up. Well, that is how the final corner became slippery, so I'm assuming I mean, that might be why we lost Noam Abramchik, who was in or around this, but I don't think he was the car that actually collided with the Allied Porsche. But certainly that's why there's a lot of damage at the final turn and why it's uh, suddenly a bit of an ice rink down there. So uh, a lot of fluid deposited there from the right front corner of the Allied Porsche. I didn't see the car come into the pits, though, because, of course, they missed the pit entry. So has the Allied Porsche been able to continue? No, it hasn't. Christensen did complete the first sector, but uh, a good 10 seconds after everybody else had managed to, so I would not at all be surprised if we suddenly find uh, that Allied Porsche parked up somewhere. Yeah, because I think with it dragging at the front end like that, that will be too slow to bring it around uh, without any further damage. If he goes too fast, of course, we know that uh, tyres can burst. But here is the field behind the safety car, behind the flatbed truck. Coming up to Noam Abramovic, he's the bottom of the screen in that Audi that went off in avoidance of all else. Certainly not involved in the contact with the uh, Allied Racing Porsche. I will give Allied Racing good news. They have got a car running in fifth place overall. Alexander Hartvig, it's the Aquamarine or turquoise and green livery Porsche. Is that the top Porsche in the race? It certainly is, with Hendrik Still, who you picked out starting so well, up into sixth place behind it. So Porsche, looking for that first win, maybe it'll be here today. But no, and Abramovic, you have to sympathize, it was not his fault. That was a consequence of uh, other things occurring behind him and in front of him. It was the thing in front that delayed him. A car backing up, probably because someone else was uh, backed in there. But for the Briche uh, JSB competition, Aston Martin, well, they wanted to stretch their legs. So he is leading outright in the silver car class. The car in second place, coming down in the background of the shot. There we are, the blue Audi is leading Pro-Am. That's the car that started on Paul Gregory Gilbert doing his standard excellent job. And uh, the top car in the AM should be car number 290, Emil Skeras, shouldn't it? Down in 13th place overall, we'll look for that as well. But to the first two, leading silver, leading Pro-Am. Put that in your memory bank and save it for later in the race. Well, certainly, uh, Emil Scaras leading the Scandinavian visitors. The second of those cars is the Otto Racing Porsche of uh, Otto Gulberg. There's the AM category. Well, you've got a Oh, sorry, down. Alban Verruti. Alban Verruti. Well, I'm, I'm wondering, did Laura Hogan in the Autosport Alpine come through in front that last time by? Well, he's down five places, six yeah. places further back. Alban Verruti in 24th overall. Alban, just uh, worth reiterating, he will be uh, running the entire race in the AVR Avatar Porsche because he does not have a teammate. He started the season with one, shed it before, uh, uh, before Paul Ricard after that opener at Monza. And maybe people want to seat alongside him, or maybe he wants all of every hour to himself. <laughs> it's all about him, isn't it? Well, absolutely. When you've got a brilliant car to race in in a fantastic championship like the GT4 European Series, powered by Rafa Racing Club, you would want as much track time as possible. The marshals go to work there, the guys in orange and blue, depending on what role they hold around the circuit. We are so indebted to them, we cannot race at all without their support and assistance. And uh, the good thing, I suppose, about this Spa-Francorchamps circuit, with it being so long, is that we should only, hopefully, 
be behind the safety car for about two laps tops, I would think. That's probably not race ready just yet. So they'll probably need another lap just so that the cars can run over that cement dust, just to sort of ingrain it and embed it in so that we can go racing again. So drivers would have seen it once already at low speed. And uh, just going down, uh, we've had the first two cars leading silver, leading Pro-Am, and Alban Ferruti, here he is, mentioned him 24th position overall, AVR, Avatar, Porsche Cayman, no longer driving as he was at the first round with Julian Piguet doing it all his own and it's working very well because he's the leader in the AM class by a tidy margin 101 points to Ferte and Ergon who you were mentioning Ergon next in class in 30th overall they're second in the AM class on 72 points so if Alvin Ferruti keeps on doing what he's doing he's got to be in a very good position and as he is 24th in a 60 car field or 58 now after losing two on the opening lap that is a very good return for his money certainly is and so far in 2023 Alban Verruti has uh, won everything absolutely everything so far two 14th places overall at Monza good enough to win the AM Cup with Julian Piguet and then of course at both the Paul Ricard races he finished in the top 10 overall to come through as the uh, leading AM driver so very impressive stuff indeed so far from Alban Verruti who really has been a one-man freight train in this GT4 European Series. It looks as though everybody's backing up. I wonder, we may even only have uh, two laps total behind the safety car, rather than going to a third. So, ah, uh, no, they're just uh, getting themselves back into formation, that's why. So Rittnaus is currently in the uh, AM Scandinavian car. There's only two uh, cars in that particular category, uh, AM Scandinavia, which is Rittnaus and Bard. And as you can see, they had, they had to uh, filter in and back each other up, but there is a need for one more lap behind the safety car because as you can see, now I'm a brown chip scar at the bottom of your screen is still needing to be recovered. Yeah, I think another, if that had been a minute, minute and a half later, they uh, might have uh, been able to go racing all over again. And all the drivers now have seen the, the cement dust, they're kicking it up for the second time through that corner. They'd have felt it the first time, it had cement dust on it the second time. That is pretty much finished, but obviously we can't go racing because so many cars run wide out of the bus stop precisely where the flat uh, the flatbed truck is but uh, let's take a look back at how it happened look for the yellow Audi coming into shot any moment now super super close the Audi is coming in what happened behind there it is the yellow nose of the Audi and in behind you have the pale blue nose of the allied racing Porsche there is the contact looks like well he's had a blow against the side of uh, Zonnev's Porsche. Oh, it's a separate incident, isn't it? It's Entirely. Oh, yes, the, the uh, Bramchich. Now, look, his car will suddenly swerve. Something happened in front of him. He yep. had to avoid it. And then all the contact was in behind. And unfortunately for car number 44, it's over and out uh, for them. So that was a rather short race for that Allied Racing Porsche. I think I counted three pairs of cars contact in the final turn, just in the slow. configuration. OK, confirmation there, safety car in this lap, the flatbed, just to prove the point, charging past our commentary position, and we'll pull off the circuit uh, on the entrance to La Source, or even on the exit of La Source, and taken down to the endurance pits and tucked away. So, for the drivers right now, what is their job? They will see very shortly, they'll have had the signal from race control to, to their teams, that'll be going to them as they go down the drop into Pujol, they will know, they'll have had a bit of a feeling in their water anyhow, that when those lights go out in the safety car, it has to be coming this lap. So their job is to get onto the tail of the car in front. In the 60 car field, if people dawdle, you can't overtake the car ahead, at this point, the safety car still on the track, you'll be losing hand over fist in the amount of time. So Julian Brichet, Florian Brichet is clear of Gregory Gilvert, and they are getting through Pujol, down through Fanyas, and the last cars are only just now getting to the top of the Kemmel Strait. They are, well, when I say miles, they're probably a good kilometre behind the front runner. So all these drivers need to be right on their toes. I'm not the driver, I'm the commentator, but I tell you what, their team manager, if they're further back, will be going, just get up on the tail of the car in front, ready for the restart. So we now have 57 cars running the race because Oscar Christensen did make it back to the pits, but has now retired the car, obviously, because the Allied Porsche had way too much damage to continue. The full motorsport Audi we saw being recovered of Narma Bramchik. The autosport Alpine of Samot Timur looks like he didn't even take the stars, so and they must have had some kind of uh, mechanical difficulties there. Uh, there's been one car coming to the pits, and that was Ivailo Tsornev in the overdrive Porsche. So they obviously collected some kind of damage in the incident as well. However, everybody else has been able to keep it on the back stuff. Is this going to be a start already for Brichet? I thought he was just going to drop the hammer at that point. Now he has. So Brichet has found the space and gone for it. He's been able to let the safety car get well clear. 
So now he has uh, decided to go for it, and this is going to be a very strong restart indeed for the Aston Martin, provided they can have full confidence going through the chicane. Up on the curbs from Weyrich, he is absolutely eager to get a decent restart out of this one. The Alpine goes a little bit wide, and it's green, 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 green once again here at spa franc back to full racing conditions, about 15 minutes away from the first pit stops. So you do not have long to make this stint count up to the first corner. Everyone in the top six still getting very eager and a very feisty Gael Castelli down into the first corner. Was trying to make an overtaking move or two come his way, but he's had to be a little bit patient through La Source. Well, I was very keen for all the drivers to get the tail. Those in front, Gregory Gilvert responded to everything that uh, Julian Prichet did, not Florian, they've corrected. Someone ran a little bit coming out of La Source. That fabulous shot down the hill into Radion, and uh, certainly Michael Schrey is having to work very, very hard indeed being pushed in that BMW is the Aston Martin coming through. No, it's going back the opposite way, because I'll tell you who's on the move. Benjamin Lassen in the Les Bas Banvenu uh, BMW. He's sharing with Ricardo van der Ender. Very, very good pairing, a good average. So they should progress from what is 10th has become 9th. I even fancy them for a podium here today. Well, fair play to this man that we're riding on board with, Antoine Petit. He was the one trying to go side by side through Eau Rouge and up the hill to Radion with Michael Schrey, the man who won last time out, of course, at Paul Ricard, Antoine Petit. So he was trying to go side by side on his home circuit in this championship uh, with the championship leader. So talk about bravery on the first green flag lap after a safety car. Antoine Petit absolutely knowing no bound in terms of courage. Now there is the McLaren tucked up behind the seventh place speed car of Benjamin Lariche. They did not get a good start, did they? Third position on the grid, dropping four places. So definitely not going well at speed car, but for elite McLaren, they are pretty much where they started, keeping themselves in that 10th position. Gael Castelli again in the Audi from CSA. He's getting very squirrely off over the curves as he tries to get back in on Benjamin Lesen, who is charging. This is a brilliant run from Lesen. Yeah, he's really, really putting the pressure on in that BMW. Oh, the, the McLaren in front, look one way, look the other. But if you get slightly loose in behind, this is a very important corner coming up right now. Kurt Portfrere, get a good exit from this. You can carry all the speed up the hill. But I tell you what, that McLaren looks so planted going through there, catching up onto the tail of uh, Benjamin Larice, the car who started third. To make that attempted move up to La Source. And you, if you get your option wrong, you hung out to dry. So he lost a lot of positions. But Benjamin Lassen really getting a move on but all the time Gregory Gilfer it's a pro-am lineup for him he's in second place but he's just look so close behind the tail of the race leader Julian Brichet now a lot of the cars got a little bit out of shape on the cement dust last time around that was their first time at full racing speed over the, the dust put down to sop up the uh, the dropping of liquid down there but the first two just seem to have the legs we saw a great attack from uh, Weyrich and the restart, but he's fallen back a little bit. I think he just got a little bit overzealous in the final chicane at uh, Sausage Curves, and it's caused a little bit as Potty goes side by side with Shrey, now trying to get back in on the undercut. As we ride on board with Antoine Potty, he's got a good acceleration, he's going to have to hug the pit wall. Michael Schrey, he's going to squeeze him as much as he can to try and intimidate him. But I think Antoine Potty in the X with Toyota has got the job done there beautifully as they go through a rouge and up to Radion. That is a textbook move out of La Source. That is what racing at spa franc is all about. Every driver dreams of making a move like that, but it was a classic case. Michael Schrey just slightly too late into La Source, and therefore couldn't get the power down as he wanted. And then when he had the nose or well, the air taken off the nose of his car into a rouge. You saw a big twitch from uh, Potty, and somehow, uh, sorry, from Shry. Somehow he held it together, and he's still on the track, and up the top of the hill they go. But uh, some fantastic fighting. So we've got Jamie Day, Andreas Bachmann, and also Julier, three very talented drivers within this field, all squabbling. And now they've got the BWT Mucha car right in behind there. That's the 28 of Rodrigo Almeida. Trying to go the long way round the outside of Anzo Julier. That'll be nice if you finish that off. No, you don't. You don't catch Enzo Julier napping like that particularly easily. So it was a brave attempt from Rodrigo Almeida as just off a little bit there in front. And that is the Aston Martin that just dropped it slightly there for Andreas Bachmann. That's the car that's had uh, a couple of uh, different <laughs> teams running it over the course of this first part of the season. But the Bachmann siblings have uh, committed to GT4 very well and have obviously given plenty of speed. They've had a lot of bad luck in the first two weekends, hopefully at Spa going to get it a little bit easier. So let's have a look at the battle for 11th place in silver. We've got Andreas Bachmann, the Swede, Jamie Day, the British driver who is based out in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and also Julier in the Borison Automotive BMW, which looks distinctly whiter than it did at Monza and Paul Ricard.
Yes, I thought my eyes were deceiving me, but right now I'll just focus on what is happening, but uh, clear reasons for that. It helps it stand out. Where we look for blue, we find white, but actually where we're looking for racing, we're finding really proper racing. So just outside the top 10, but a, a wonderful, wonderful scrap. Now, up front, just notice the car in fourth place, the white Alpine of Antoine Leclerc had a very, very strange line coming into the corner, and in behind, we've suddenly got, well, who's doing overtaking? I'll tell you what, it should be quite easy to name, because it is the charging Benjamin Lasset, BMW 117, slightly compromised exit, but he's got the inside line going up into La Source. You can see the Audi is still in front in the hands of Benjamin Larish, but he's on the wrong line to sweep around the corner. Sweepy tries, and they both catch the Porsche in front of him, and Hendrick still, so it's really, oh, my word, breathe in, breathe out. I tell you what, Benjamin Larish is clearly feeling a little bit irate at Benjamin Lassen. Who do you think you are? I'm the guy who won the first race of the season. What do you think you're playing at? As Benjamin Lassen is absolutely on the lock stop as he drops out of Eau Rouge and up the hill to Radion. The car just washing out on the bottom. But I tell you what, he's not frightened at all. Benjamin Lassen absolutely determined to continue this run. Benjamin Larish is now closing up on Hendrik Still, the uh, AM competitor in the... Uh, sorry, the Pro-Am competitor, I should say, in front. So uh, the Porsche there is still in the top six. But Benjamin Larish needs to get past Hendrik Steele pretty quick. Otherwise, Benjamin Lassen is going to get his opportunity. And Sandy Mitchell there in the McLaren is thinking, well, this is fine. The three of you could squabble away. I might be able to pick up a top six. Yeah, yeah, we saw what you did there. Jack Mitchell, of course, not Sandy. But uh, the racing so, so super tight at the tail end of the top ten. But that little battle has compressed. It was two cars. Now it's three. Now it's four. And, in fact, a very good run up the hill. Out of Radio. Oh, Benjamin Lassen getting it very... Not Benjamin, sorry. It's uh, just in front of him. It's uh, Benjamin Larish getting it very wrong. But somehow getting back on the grass without too much fanfare or, indeed, rotation. So that was a, a real heart in mouth movement. So we're talking about this wonderful battle. Six, seven, eight, ninth, nose to tail. And they're being joined by others, the Aston Martin in the background with Louis Merrick and in behind Gael Castelli, all those years of experience in the and now driving for one, the 111, which is the CSA Racing Audi getting in on the act. Haven't talked too much about the Audis, except, of course, the one in second place, Gregory Gilbert's overall. And still, as the drivers go out of Puan, they are kicking up the dirt and Fania as well. You have Louis Merrick getting it very wrong indeed, and that could be the opportunity for Gael Castelli in the CSA Racing Audi. A little bit of a drop off out of Curb Pour Frere as well, just in front of them. Couldn't tell whether it was Benjamin Lassen or Jack Mitchell that was dropping it. And now we've got an opportunity as the Alpine of Antoine Leclerc is going to lose out to Alexander Hartwig. Very nice move from Alexander Hartwig. He and his teammate Nathan Sharp have only just recently moved to the world of GT4 from their karting exploits as teenagers. And they are definitely uh, getting it very quickly done in the Allied Porsche. They have taken to GT4 racing like a duck to water. It's not going to be long before they're competing for victories. They might even get a shot of it today. Moving up to fourth position, their next target is going to be Victor Weyrich in the Aston. Uh, the strange thing there, a lap before Antoine Le Leclerc made a mistake on, between Blanchimont and bus stop, and the same thing happened. And that was the moment, obviously, Alexander Hartwig had noticed, banked that knowledge and attacked the next time around. And uh, what we're seeing, all these different manufacturers, but their performance is balanced, but at different points on the circuit. And certainly coming up the hill, it looks so the Alpine is not quite the tool to have, and the Porsche looks fabulous in the approach to the bus stop. One of the few places you can really, really stick your neck out there. That's the thing. At Monza, the car to have was the BMW. At Paul Ricard, the Alpine was pretty strong, to be fair. But uh, here at Spa, yet again, the tide has turned, and it's uh, a combination of Aston and Audi that seems to be particularly strong up the front. But then you do have the odd Porsche that's able to run strong, and there is Henrik Still managing to keep Larish at bay, and that's enough to give Lesen the opportunity to cut in round the outside of Le Combe. That will have really irated Benjamin Larish. He'll be absolutely hopping mad that he let that one get away from him and lost a position to the BMW. Well, he had half a look at Hendrik still, and that just put him slightly offline, and uh, certainly Benjamin Lassen didn't need a second invitation. Now he's all over the tail of the green Porsche of Hendrik still. That was a, a fabulous moment there for Benjamin Lassen. Now, what's this happening? Oh, Rouge, you don't want to be doing that. And two cars that are so wide off the track, they're nearly in the neighbouring region of Belgium, but that was a massive save. So we'll thank our lucky stars for that one, but uh, I don't think drivers would win friends if they have moments like that at uh, Eau Rouge. Ay, 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 Corentin Thiers in the CMR Toyota getting very close to the outer wall there. Just about managed to save it, though, so that could have been a lot messier than it actually ended up being. Now, Benjamin Larish is getting back on the horse, charging after the BMW in front, but Jack Mitchell in the McLaren really wants a piece of him. So as they drop down through the right and up to Gourpoul Frere, 
McLaren just needs a slightly smoother line off the turn. A little bit of curb from Benjamin LaRiche, but that McLaren, which is still in its development season, don't forget, this is still a brand new car to the GT4 category. And they are doing a fantastic job. They're keeping Louis Merrick at bay and on the assault of Benjamin LaRiche. But up front, Brichet has pulled out 1.2 seconds gap now to uh, the Audi behind them in the Pro-Am category. Santanoc Junior Team car of Gregory Gilvert and Benjamin Lesen further back is still absolutely adamant that Hendrik still is just going to be a blip on his radar rather than a serious threat. Yeah, the McLaren in uh, running around with Jack Mitchell at the wheel in eight, ninth place overall is very quick up the hill, is very catching a double, sometimes a treble toe, but then around the lower part of the circuit, I'm talking going into Kurt Paul Freire out of Fania, it just seems to lose out a bit. Maybe it's just the way the car's set up. That's where he's losing. But right now, that yellow McLaren, Arturo, in the background of the shot behind the multicolored Audi in front of it, is looking a bit interested as they go down the hill from La Source. He'll be choosing his moment to get a clean line through Rouge and Radion and then get a toe. But actually, this is the first time I sense it's been the toe has been broken. There we are, that shot my commentary down. Well, Castelli has now managed to get past Merrick. Not entirely sure where he did that. It might have been into La Source, actually, as he was very close to him. And then we've got Fontana in the Porsche there in 12th position. That's Alex Fontana in the Sen 3 Ticino Porsche. Le Sen trying to go right round the outside of Hendrik Still. Hendrik Still is not going to lose that one napping. But they drift a little bit deep out of Les Combes. Benjamin Larice trying to stay hungry, but he doesn't want to get too close. That's the thing. If you've got an opportunity on pure speed out of the corner, you don't want to get too close to the two drivers battling in front, just in case you get collected in the incident. Yeah, but uh, much as the Sen got past uh, La Riche, so the moment's come. The pit stop window is about to be open right now, just as open. So you can come in if you feel like it next time. This time, oh, mistake there from Hedrick still dropping down from speaker's corner. Is this going to be enough to leave a gap? Not quite enough for Benjamin Lassen and the BMW to get through. And you know what? With his stand back up, Benjamin La Riche is getting back on the tail in that uh, orange, yellow and blue Audi. Let's see what he can do. But it's all nip. It's all tight. One little challenge. And here comes a challenge up the inside. Great move there from Benjamin Lassen. Can he get it turned in, having taken that very tight line? Yes, he can. And so uh, for Hendrik still, well, he's not running in the same class. He's in the uh, Pro-Am class, so he, you know, he's got to suddenly reassess, but he's running very well. But right now, we always could see the story was the ascent into the top 10 and up it for Benjamin Lassen. He's doing just that. But you know what? His fun's about to end because the pit window is open. He could stay on for another seven minutes or so. We can do the maths on that. Let's call it another th uh, three laps. But uh, sometime soon, he'll have to come in and hand over to Ricardo Veranda, who knows the BMW and he knows spa franc supremely well. He certainly does, but that's a big psychological upper hand there for Lassen to get the overtaking move done before his pit stop. He didn't really want to come in in traffic. He can actually extend the gap a little bit over Hendrik still if he wants to time it right now. How many drivers are going to pit in at the first available opportunity? Nobody in the top six, but Benjamin Larish has had enough. He's decided, right, let's get out into clear air, give the car to Robert Consani, and Michael Schrey has done the same thing as well. He's going to give the BMW over to Gabriele Piana. Yeah, Gabriele, absolutely fabulous driver, and certainly that was a good move from both of those because having lost a couple of positions recently, uh, Benjamin Larish just needs to hand over and see what they can do. Up front, though, particularly if you have a pro-am pairing and your pro start the race, they will stay in as long as they possibly can before the AM takes over. If you're running in the silver class, so you've got two drivers of uh, a higher ranking, then, of course, you can do it pretty evenly according to where you are in the battle, in the traffic. So it looks like there's going to be a couple of others coming in. The Borussia Automotive BMW of Enzo Julier has also come into the pits. Michael Schrey as well. We saw him at that little moment down at uh, the bottom of Eau Rouge, but uh, he has come in early, as we pointed out, to hand over to Gabriele Piana. And Laurent Hergon in the Alpine has decided to come into the pits as well. So that's uh, relevant, uh, keeping an eye on the battle further back in the pack. That's going to be interesting for the AM victory later. On board with Antoine Potty. Still getting into the mix there, still having a great battle. Now he is going wheel to wheel with, is that the Aston Martin in front of Louis Merrick? Either that or it's uh, Fontana in the Porsche. I think it might be the Porsche. Yes, it, I think it's Fontana in the Ticino Porsche that's only just managed to get into 10th position. Antoine Petit desperately trying to uh, shake him off. But at the moment, Antoine Petit having already dealt with quite a few drivers around him, now he's got a good run. Might get an opportunity into the double gauche, but not with Alex Fontana holding the middle of the road like that. Very good defensive tactics from Fontana. So Antoine Petit's going to have to try something else, but the back of the car washes out through the first of the double gauche car, uh, corners. And Antoine Petit has very little road to play with there. He's getting the blinkers on. Come on, man. We're in different classes. Get out of the way. 
Yeah, while one in ten cars in the top 30 positions, the top half of the field pitted down the tail end of the field, it's pretty much one in two were coming in. So it shows the difference between the, the silver lineups and the pro-am lineups, and of course the am as well. But some fantastic battling, and it's strange in a field of 60 cars, you suddenly get two sets of teammates fighting each other. But of course their battles will be spiked. And then one of the first car to make a pit stop, uh, going back into the race now. Uh, it was, uh, of course, driven beautifully very early on by Benjamin Larice. But Robert Consani's taken over. A bit of an, a liner from a wheel arch line there in the track. And our race leader, Julian Brichet, missing that. That's on the, uh, well, it's unsighted when you come out of the top corner of the screen there, which is uh, one of the most fearsome corners, Blanchimont. And then just as you're settling down, thinking, how hard are I going to break for a bus stop? There's a bit of bodywork in the track. Well, there isn't any more because somebody has just shoved it out of the way and cleared it off. Into the pits comes Antoine Potty. And I think the Aston Martin of Louis Merrick in just behind him as well. So Antoine Petit is going to bring the Toyota in to hand the X Swift car over to Etienne Shelley. Looks like one of the McLarens coming into the pits there as well. I think that's going to be Josh Rattigan, hasn't it? So Veruti's come in, so he will obviously not get out of the car. But then Josh Rattigan will. So there's a minimum pit stop time and uh, race in, race out. You often get someone who just shaves a second off that and then has to come in and stop for the second that they robbed. And of course, the in and the out will lose all their chances. But Antoine Potty, such a strong season so far this year, sharing with Etienne Shelley, another second generation racer. And uh, again, they've had some great results for X Swift Racing so far, but it's about getting them frequently. This is the fifth race. This is round three of the championship. It's going through beautifully. Monza, Paul Ricard, Paul, Paul Frank, uh, Spo, Spa Francorchamps, not a bad trio of circuits to get the season underway. Certainly is. There is an investigation going on for pit lane speeding, and that is for Ferte, unfortunately, in the Alpine. Now, was it Hergon that did the speeding, or was it uh, Ferte as he came out of the pits? It's unclear, but certainly they are under investigation. And once you're under investigation, it's pretty much a slam dunk, isn't it? And it, they're not the only car either, because I think Beltoise in the other Alpine is also under investigation for pit lane speeding. Well, they were going beautifully at Paul Ricard. They're going a bit too quickly at Spa out of the pits. Right, possible place change coming up. The white Alpine is having to defend, defend. And this is a corner coming into Fania that uh, certainly Benjamin Descent likes to put his BMW up the inside, but he does not make it through into fifth place. Antoine Leclerc, don't forget, earlier in the race, we saw him being passed by uh, the blue and green Porsche, which is still in front. Alexander Hartwig going out of the bottom of the image there. He is in fourth place, fifth, sixth, seventh. Uh, Hendrick still Jack Mitchell in eight in the yellow elite McLaren. So some cracking scraps here, but all the drivers know that uh, it's not the sort of Damocles, it's just the fact that their driving stint is about to come to an end. Maybe one more lap can be squeaked in. Now, Weyrick is up the road in front of the Aston Martin. He's got a back marker in front of him. That's one of the BWT Mucha Mercedes cars. So that could be a real compromise uh, making his way towards his pit stop. As there is Julien Brichet. So what are we going to see? Is it going to be a pit stop? No, not yet. What about Gilbert? He has to think about it, but again, he decides not to. Weyrich is getting held up, but now look, we've got a swarm of cars coming in. Hartwig comes in, Leclerc comes in, Lesen comes in, and Jack Mitchell comes in as well. Yeah, could they have squeaked in one more lap? They could, but it would be really quite close. But also, again, according to their positions, they bring those cars in. But Julian Brichet, Gregory Gilbert, Victor Raywish, and uh, Henrik Still all continue in those top four positions. But uh, do not speed in the pit lane. We know you can get penalised for that. Do not undercut your pit stop. You have a minimum time from pit in to pit out. And that's where the crews really need to use their experience and communication as well from the pit wall or from the, the, the race engineer to the driver. Well, Lonnie Martin has been given a final warning for track limits. He's already been given a black and white flag for doing so. But now he is been given a final warning as well so uh, some big disasters there there is the number three that of course is now Robert Consani behind the wheel and behind him is Gabriele Piana now this is why they've come in early because now they've got clear track in front of them they don't have to worry about the back markers that they're getting held up in at the front they don't have to worry about traffic they don't have to worry about overtaking or catching up with somebody they can just have clear track in front of them and this is where they can really start to build a bit of a gap so what we're seeing in this picture is the first three cars that have pitted and come out will know their overall placing when the other cars that pitted last time around come out probably in front of them but what I can tell you is Gabriele Piana has done what he's done so many times 
He's absolutely picked up that BMW Hofer Racing by Bob Motorsport, and he's certainly much closer to the number three Audi in front of him than he was before his teammate Michael Schrey brought it in. So Gabriella Pianet, there it is, the silver and blue BMW getting closer and closer. No wonder they've won so many races over the years. What a pairing. Yeah, this is all about the undercut strategy, isn't it? And it's something that Schrey and Piana have been very good at over the course of these last few seasons. It's how they managed to come through to get the win uh, so smartly in race two at Monza this year. They were able to use that strategy to perfection. And now with Robert Consani and Gabriele Piana stretching the legs out each other. And of course, you've got Entia Chili in the Toyota just behind them as well. He came in a lap after them, but they're using this as a perfect opportunity. Here comes the gaggle of cars coming out of the pits. Now, don't forget, they've still got to stay in the pit exit. They won't be able to get up to speed because they've got to stay in the pit exit. Now, watch for where Robert Consani exits the pits in relation to Nathan Sharp. That's going to be quite critical. So he flies past the Aston Martin, but he's going to be up to speed, so he hasn't quite gained the time that he was hoping to gain on the McLaren. And that is, it's a good idea, but they just haven't been able to maximize the speed. And Denning, who has come out of the pits in 15th position, he's managed to filter in just in front of Consani and Piana. So it's a good strategy, but it hasn't quite worked out for them. Well, wait to see, because other cars are still coming out of the pits now, and in fact, still going into the pits. Race leader Julian Brichet, uh, Gregory Gilbert, and Victor Weyrich, and Henrik still all coming into the pits. Of course, when they come back out next time, and that shot we just saw of Rouge absolutely proved to think, well, they've clearly come out ahead, but then you suddenly wait, and coming down the hill at full speed, and then that amazing speed of the cars at full racing speed going through Radion. You may seem as though you're not going to come out in front or you're already out on the track, but uh, you will be. So the car's still standing in the pit lane. WNS Motorsport. Hendrick still drove that very well in the first half of the race. Came in from fourth place. Max Kronberg is being strapped in right now. Where will they slot out? Will they still be in the top four, top six or even the top ten? What I love about the racing here at Spa, of course, is you've got this really interesting dynamic in the pit lane because you've got 30 cars that have their pit box in the F1 pit lane, and then you've got the other 30 cars that have their pit box round the corner on the endurance pit lane. And look at Robert Kansani, who has decided right. We didn't gain as much time as we wanted to as the pit window now closes. Everybody's made it into the pits for their mandatory stop. Cars are still coming out, but they've managed to get in in time. So I don't think there's going to be any penalties on that score, but. Uh, Benjamin, uh, sorry, Robert Consani even, still pushing here to try and get one over on Denning, who is the car in front of him. And this is going to be a very tough battle indeed because Alex Denning has absolutely no obligation to do anything uh, in the way of helping out the two cars behind. But what this has done is it's brought Gabriele Piana into the mix. As running, oh, and into the wall. Somebody's gone off there. That uh, looks like one of the Astons. Well, let's look at White Tell and we have a, an overtaking manoeuvre from Gabriel Piana. It's not going to work, but he's just doing his utmost to unseat Robert Consani. And that takes the pressure off Alex Denning, which is very important for the McLaren driver because this is his first meeting in this car. He's the third driver as a, the third driver to take the, the seat alongside Jack Mitchell. Jack did a brilliant job in the first half of the race. But now, how are the cars going to be coming out of pit lane? The cars that were first into the pits, JSB competition. We've swapped one Brichet for another. Julian over to Florian. I've got a nasty feeling that might be one of the Code Alpines, you know. I wonder if that's Antoine Leclerc. Because Antoine Leclerc is tumbling down the ranks. Very, very sharpish indeed and has not come through. Well, it was the right colour. It was a white car. Would it be Loic Villiger? Would he have been taken over already? But uh, got a few cars. That should be our race leader, the JSB Aston Martin. The car is second place now in the hands of Christoph Hamel. And the BMW, I thought it might get in the top three. It has Ricardo van der Ende. Then we've got Henrik Kronberg, Nathan Sharp. You'll talk about him. Alex Denning in sixth place. This is the tail of the top ten. So this is an opportunity for Gabriele Piana now, trying to work his way through on Cunyol. But he drifts out a little bit wide. How much time have they managed to gain on the racing spirit of Le Mans Aston? Because that's dropped all the way down to 10th position. Lachenauer now trying to dive back in on the inside of Gabriele Piana. And as a result of that, Etienne Chili in the Toyota has a chance to catch up. We're still yellow flags in sector two, but up the inside, nice move from Piana, nice move from Chili, and this is all going wrong for Lachenauer because I think Rivendell Sartre in the Aston is going to get through on the inside line as well. Very nicely done. It's all gone wrong for the racing spirit of Le Mans Aston. Has lightning struck again? Is this very much, well, the car is going to retire yet again because it's not winning? Uh, now all cars having to really back it up. Almost an overtaking maneuver there, but uh, the car that was fourth before the pit stop responded fast in the car behind. Oh, the bonnet's sticking up for Alex Denning. Uh, in car number 78. That 
that's the car that was run by Jack Mitchell, and it's, it was an Aston Martin that went around. Uh, blue at the nose, white at the tail. It's Verdier. So uh, Tom Verdier with Bailey Voisin started that race. Voisin, whatever you want to put it. GPA Racing, Aston Martin, a standard place to go off. There we have, oh, two to tango. The number 76 uh, Porsche also facing the wrong way. That's uh, Patrick Hoffman took over the second, the century Porsche, Ciccino Porsches. And again, another standard place to go off at the top of the hill, just when you're trying to turn into that chicane at, at uh, Pif Paf. Yeah, so if you're Alex Fontana, that's a bitter disappointment because he ran as high as 10th position, don't forget, in his stint. So very disappointing indeed to see Hoffman bin it there or whether he binned it on his own or whether he had some assistance, we're not entirely sure. Course car rejoining the field just in front of one of the Porsches, getting a little bit of a rude awakening there, but nothing major to concern themselves with. That was the uh, Porsche of Ivan Giacoma that had to uh, take avoiding action. Right, let's just refresh. Well, let's just run down the order after those uh, after the pit stops. 12 laps on the board. Julian Brichet, the JSB competition Aston Martin, started from second on the grid uh, and got into the lead straight away. Christophe Hamon started on, his car started on pole. There is our race leader, the Aston Martin blue with the orange shirt trimming. Looks fantastic. And that is JSB competition. He's going to have the field a bunch up behind. Uh, Christophe Hamon and uh, Conrad, uh, Constantin Lachenau at the start of the lap was in third place, but as we've seen, he's tumbled back down. So uh, it should be Ricardo van der Ender who moves up, and yes, he does into third position. The rest of the field, a little bit of a gap. And uh, so Oh, puncture, puncture for the speed car. Puncture for Robert Consani. Ah, so now Consani's got a puncture. Was the contact there that led to the puncture? Was there some damage, some debris on the track? But uh, that is really sad. Started third, lost a bit of ground in the first into the race, but was looking competitive. Now, you know what I'm just wondering? Oh, no, hold on, it was the front end of the McLaren that was sticking up, wasn't it? Because, true, yeah. because they were very close to each other in, in similar positions. So for Consani, he's into the pits. There goes but I think a lot's been happening. Yeah, there goes any chance of the speed car. So that's what happened to the Aston Martin. Goodness me, that was a rather precarious hit, wasn't and it? And that is why the bonnet was sticking up on the McLaren Artura as well. So there was the contact. Oh, oh Hoffman, he just lost it under brakes. No contact with anybody. He just, unfortunately, the car just veered off to the left when he hit the brakes. And car, on cold tyres, it's car, easily 55. done. 10 second time penalty added to the end for pit lane speeding. Car 35, car 35 and 55. And there we go. The two Alpines, unfortunately, have been given a five second time penalty for speeding in the pits. They were under investigation, as we know. So that's the Alain Ferte car, the number 55, and Beltois in the 35 as well. Very unfortunate for both cars there we go I said before the pit stop some people take a tumble and it just does, undoes all the good work but for the Brichets what a race it's been for them for JSB competition they got it neat they got it tidy and the car sitting in the pit lane could have had a good result Robert Consani Benjamin Larish it was running happily in the top 10 but one little bit of contact one presumes a one shard of something sharp and that has dropped it to nowhere very unfortunate and it's not the first time that the speed car Audi has uh, come a cropper when it had an opportunity to take the win it didn't even complete the first lap at Monza in race two having won on the previous race let's have a look at what happened there well this is the aftermath and it doesn't look to me as though actually the puncture has actually done too much damage to the bodywork so hopefully the full course yellow has kind of saved the bacon of that car a little bit. Yeah, it gave it a little uh, potential to lose less time coming in. But in a field like this, you come in for a pit, you limp in slowly. You have your pit stop, your tyre change, you go back out. It's such a long pit, it's up to La Source and down to Eau Rouge that that puts you nowhere. But for this car, the white BMW 117, the Spas Banvenu, now in the hands of Ricardo van der Ender, it broke into the top 10. We watched it working its way up the order. Top six, thereabouts. It got up to fifth just before the pit stops. Pit stops made, brilliant restart. Ricardo van der Ender, thank you very much. Up to third position. However, what's the clock doing? We're under 20 minutes, just over 18 minutes to go in this race. I can see three cars coming down the hill. I can see no others. And then finally, the Porsche <laughs> of Max Kronberg comes down. They can't close in on the cars ahead. It's not safety car, it's full course yellow. They've got to hold their station at a maximum speed of not very much at all. So for drivers back in the pack, it'd be really frustrating, particularly if you were in a pro-am lineup where you were the pro doing the second half of the race, you cannot use your absolute potential. But for Florian Brichet, well, counts off the laps. So what we've got here is four different manufacturers in the top four places, Aston Martin, Audi, BMW, and that Porsche of Max Kronberg desperately trying to become the fifth different manufacturer to win a race. But they are going to be quite considerable in terms of their deficit back. 
uh, after the four-course yellows, just because of the position they have on the track, don't really look at the seconds gap to the leader at this moment in time, because obviously once they come off full-course yellow, they'll be up to racing speed, and so those gaps will remain the same, but the time between the cars will actually decrease. There is Valder, who is the leading Pro-Am Scandinavian driver, doing a great job in the number 298 BMW for Mbilar Group. And they are currently running just in front of Lefterov in the overdrive Porsche. Now, we were talking about Porsche maybe trying to come through and take its first win of the year. McLaren, likewise, their best placed car is the elite number 78 McLaren. But Alex Denning is running sixth, so still has potential. But every lap we continue at full course yellow with the field not being able to close up will, will hurt. Plus the fact that bonnet might just be slightly loose, but it's always a distraction. You know, just at the point you're trying to make an overtaking manoeuvre. Well, interestingly, the Boris Sun Automotive BMWs have reunited. We saw Enzo Julier and Tom Edgar battling in the opening phase. They've handed the cars over now to Gedik and Bessler, the two Turkish drivers, and they are together on the road, 15th and 16th. Not really in contention for the win this time, unfortunately. Uh, there is the Am Cup leader, it's Ferte, but unfortunately he's got a five-second penalty for speeding in the pits. Now, is that going to cost him the Am victory, though? I'm not entirely sure it will, because Alban Ferruti... Oh, well... Ferruti is fairly close behind him, actually. So once they get up to racing speed, Alan Ferte is going to have to go like a scalded cat out of a paper bag to get away from Alban Ferruti in the Porsche. All right. The safety car is coming out now by the look of it. OK, well, that will actually limit the possibility of Alban Ferruti catching. But you know what? Al Alan Ferte has been going like a scalded cat for about 35 years in motor racing. Fabulous in Formula 2, Formula 3000. Great having back racing. I saw him a few years ago at the Dubai 24 hours, as fresh as could be and still in love with the sport, but uh, I think he should have this one under control, particularly with this safety car. Now, just looking down the order, one car we talked about fleetingly, it's outside the top 20 now, Loic Villiger in the um, co-racing development Alpine, started by Antoine Leclerc, it was there running in fourth place, then it suddenly lost a bit of ground and it has continued to do so. Yeah, so big problems, unfortunately, then for the Alpine, because they've dropped all the way to 21st position now, Loic Villiger. Is there in 21st position? Not quite sure what happened to that. We'll have to catch up with that later. And, and just one thing I want to point out, it's not a five-second penalty, but a 10-second penalty. Oh, that right. is going to hurt a lot more for the two cars that were pinged for that. Car 35 with uh, Vincent Beltois driving now, the other code racing development at, at Alpine, and 55 we just mentioned. Uh, Laurent Ergon started that in the AM class, running second in class, now leading it, but Alain Ferté needing a 10-second addition to his time. I think he's eight seconds clear. We'll do the maths on that. It's close. It is very close. Right, the safety car is on the Kemmel straight. We can see it on our track map here and they're going to pick up the leader uh, Florian Brichet so we are going to go to safety car rather than full course yellow so that's going to tighten the field up which is going to give us a bit of a grandstand finish for us it's fantastic for some of the cars and drivers out there probably less so uh, Florian Brichet though he'll take it any day of the week sitting at the front of the queue that's where he wants to keep it it's been there since the acceleration away from the front row of the grid got it together is uh, Julian Brichet got it together and for JSB competition, their best finish so far this year, I'll give you their finishes, 23rd, 26th, 19th, 31th, 31st, 31st. <laughs> is this an improvement? I'd say so. But and now the bonnet has really come oh, up yeah, on Alex Denning's uh, McLaren, that ain't going to be easy seeing into left-handers, I think that will probably need to come in, I can't imagine the race officials will let that continue in the racing, so strike one, out of the top 10, in fact, from sixth position overall. So really good run for them, but unfortunately, what presumes a little bit of contact caused it to come up, and since then, the damage has come. Maybe running up the Kemmel straight. What a horrible moment to have that come flapping back. Yeah, you've really got to feel for Alex Denning. Look, he's actually trying to lean out of the car. His hand is out of the car. He's trying to essentially get the bonnet to come off, because if it comes off, he won't get a technical flag, but if he can't rip it off himself, then he's going to have to have a technical flag. But look, he's, he's doing his best. The crew are probably telling him there, look, if you can rip it off and it can just tumble off behind you, then that's fine. But look, he's doing... Well, it's not so fine for the driver in the car no, behind. indeed, it's not. I just thought Alex Cugno wouldn't particularly want that and uh, whatever comes with it. He won't be able to push it forward while the car's going forward to flap it down into prone position. But right now, how frustrating. Uh, for the elite motorsport crew. But well, the thing is, this is a possible podium disappearing, so they're literally trying anything they possibly can now. If they can rip it off, then they're going to try it. Oh, no, it's going to get caught on the wing mirror on the left side, isn't it? This is unfortunate for the elite McLaren. It's the most irritating of things, because clearly the car itself is running fine. It's just a piece of bodywork, essentially, but it's a big enough piece of bodywork that if that detaches at full speed, 
then it's really going to cause a problem. The issue he's now got, of course, is that it doesn't appear to be coming off on that uh, left quarter. So the rest of it's come off quite easily, but there's that one little section. But you've got to, unfortunately, go with the benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt is that that thing could come off. So you don't want to risk it happening. They, I think they're going to have to give him the technical flag. Oh, he's, so got, he's got to come in. Any thought of him possibly ripping it off and throwing it behind him is absolutely against everything you need in racing. He's yeah. going to have to come in. The sister car running further down the order, so frustrated that's Tom Edmondson a little bit further back, but a really good result going away for Elite Motorsport. He cannot continue like that. What we do have, though, is a queue of cars with uh, inside the top ten. We've still got two cars from the Pro-Am class, so really well done to Christoph Hamel in second place. Of course, he can't be overtaken at the moment. Safety car still at the front of the field, but there he is in that blue Audi behind the darker blue and orange Aston Martin of JSB competition with uh, Brice at the wheel. But it's been a busy, busy race. So we've and got 54 cars still running. I do believe we're about to hear from Bailey Voisin, who is down in pit lane. Uh, Gemma Scott will be chatting as Hinton Bits comes out extending in the McLaren. Safety car. Bailey, obviously difficult for you because you're out of the race at this point. What happened? Yeah, a um, bit difficult to know. I mean, my first stint was quite good, but I handed over the card to Tom, uh, who's my teammate for this weekend, and uh, it seemed that on the outlap he had a coming together with one of the McLarens, uh, which put us out the race. He got spun round and into the wall, so it's really unfortunate. Um, you know, with around 60 cars on the grid, it's really difficult to, to you know, keep it clean and then anything can happen. But um, it was going quite well until that point. Uh, a real shame to, to be ending the race like that, and especially the fact that he was wasn't able to race, uh, you know, for the for the majority of his stint is really unfortunate. So hopefully we can get the car back together. I know the team will do a great job, um, and we'll just have to see for tomorrow. Well, good luck for that. Thank you very much for talking to us, Bailey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank good to hear from Bailey was out there. But uh, as Alex Denning came in with the bonnet sideways on his car, just in front of him, another McLaren, Eric Behrens, Alpha B Racing. That came in smoking past us as it went up to La Source and came in so slowly. And poor old uh, Alex Denning there thinking, come on, come on, come on, but you can't speed. He had no chance of speeding in the pit lane. So I think they can put a line through this race in terms of points for elite motorsport. But one person who can't do that is uh, Florian Brichet, leading the way by 2.2 seconds. No one can close up, but safety car, I think, is probably going to come in this lap. Did we hear that message? We did indeed, Good. yes. Uh, Eric Behrens, yeah, in the Alfa Racing McLaren. That is the Ronnie Peterson tribute McLaren. They painted it in those colours very much on purpose uh, in uh, tribute to the uh, fantastic Swedish racing driver, arguably Sweden's greatest ever uh, racing driver in the world of motorsport. But uh, yes, there are unfortunately two McLarens that are going no further in terms of competitive nature of racing. That could drop us to 52 cars, which is not bad, actually, considering we started with 60 and we've had an awful lot of things happen. Safety car coming in this lap, which means obviously the lead that Brichet had over Hamel is completely gone. If it was still full course yellow, then he would have that gap to sustain. What it also does, of course, is it brings in Ricardo van der Ende. We know how quick that BMW is in the hands of Benjamin Lassen. Ricardo van der Ende has been able to use that brilliant first stint, and uh, the outlap went very well as well, to get him into third position. There's a very good chance here that the L'Espace Bienvenue BMW might just have a chance at the victory. We've got 8 minutes 45 on the clock. So in terms of the laps we've got left to run, I would say that's no more than four. So it's going to be an interesting run there. I think maybe even three laps to go by the time they come across the line. Well, because the thing there, Jake, is the fact that the cars as they're coming behind the safety car are going so much more slowly than they would ordinarily. And the best lap of the race is at two, just over two and a half minutes. So by the time they get up there, we'll have, oh, it's going to be very, very close indeed. But I tell you what, Ricardo van der Ende, quite clever there, through Blanchemont, hung back a little bit. He knows he can't overtake, but what he wants is the ultimate exit to the bus stop, where, as you can see, the race leader, uh, Florian Brichet, is being pushed slightly out of shape Ooh. and sorts and went too deep. Oh, this is a moment for exactly what Ricardo van der Ende wanted to come his way and can he get past Christophe Hamon didn't quite get the power down as he wanted but that was a near slip up from the race leader he's just enough in front to surely get into La Source and keep the lead but he's got to keep the door closed and he's left it open so Christophe Hamon well you don't ask twice absolutely amazing for Christophe Hamon he's going to take the lead but watch out for Ricardo van der Ende as we've got seven minutes 45 of racing still to come it's not a bad exit for Brichet he might get a chance he's going to try and snake it surely he's not going to take the gamble and roll that dice down towards the first turn 
He had to think about it through Rouge and up to Radion. And meanwhile, the two Porsches are going side by side. Kronberg and Schapp are having a big moment as they go wheel to wheel up the hill. Now Ricardo van der Ende is going to get a brilliant charge forward. He's not just going to get past Priche, he's going to get past Hamar as well. He has timed this to perfection and the BMW is going to try and pull across on the Audi. Can he get there? Yes, he can. Oh my goodness. What a charge from Ricardo van der Ende. Well, absolutely textbook racing. It's about getting that clean exit from uh, Radion. He then used the double toe up the hill, but uh, Christophe Hamon saying, I'm not beaten, but I think you sort of are because Ricardo Ender, Van der Ender, he hung back that little bit, going down the slope, realised he wasn't going to make the perfect exit from La Source. That was an absolute moment of using your experience to the full. Now he's using his speed. And for Christophe Hamon, he's up into that second place, but you certainly say that uh, Florian Brichet is far from finished in the Aston Martin, pushing, pushing, pushing. And look in fourth place now it's Gabriele Biana yet again he has been very strong indeed on the restart he was seventh at the start of the lap and he's now in B4 and he's catching up to these guys hand over fist it looks like it's going to be another silver podium and that's perfect in terms of their championship ramifications. Now, again, that worked very, very well. He was seventh into last source, but the three cars in front of him, including those two Porsches that ran wide at uh, Eau Rouge, they tried to go three abreast down the hill past the endurance pits. He could sense they weren't going to come out of it cleanly, and he absolutely pounced. So suddenly two BMWs in the top four positions. Oh, and off, off goes Brichet. Surely he's not going to be able to sustain that in front of Piana. Piana's going to have the better run out of Kurt Paulfrère. And as they come up to the bus stop, I'm sure the BMW is going to have a run. Well, he most certainly will. But you know what? For Florian Brichet, I think the tyre temperature's dropped away behind the safety car in the full course yellow. Oh. And he's just been rattled. And that was a, a big moment there from Gabriele Piano. It was a bit like trying to hold your hands out to stop mercury pouring through. Well, Piana technically got the overtaking move done through Blanchimont off the road. So that's going to be an interesting one to... Uh, decipher later but for the moment he is up into third position past Florian Brichet and of course that is now second in the silver category look at the squabble coming out of the final chicane as everybody's trying to take as much benefit from this sprint style restart as they possibly can and look Brichet has managed to get back through past Piana at La Source so clearly the team got on the radio to Gabriele Piana and said look I know it was a lovely move but you did it off the road you're going to have to let him go and do it again and do it again, he will. So again, he's got a slightly cleaner line between Eau Rouge and Radion. He's already gaining, he'll get in the slipstream of that Aston Martin that's back into third position. Some drivers further back are going to have to watch because uh, watch out. Car 26, black and white warning flag, Rodrigue Guillaume in one of the racing spirit of Olamar Aston Martins and other drivers deciding wherever the circuit is, they don't need to be there. Yes, you do, between the white lines, please. Yeah, that was uh, Kenny Hesemans. Uh, well, no, it's not Kenny Hesemans, it's the other driver in the uh, Chevrolet. A fabulous battle going on up the top of the hill. Dante, Dante Rapanga is the driver you're looking for, but again, that long run up the Kemmel straight, the possibility, that's all it is of overtaking at the top of the hill. On the outside, the Alpine's going to get squeezed here by Lachenauer. Villigier, who of course is looking good for a podium in Pro-Am, trying to move up a little bit further forward, cuts across the front of Carton in the Aston Martin, so that was well held. Yeah, and... Uh, Certainly Villiger has gained five positions since he took over that car. It fell from fourth to 21st after the pit stops, working his way back up. Cream rises to the top, it said, and certainly looking at number two, Gabriele Piana. I don't think he stopped. He's running around in fourth place. He, as we saw last time around, just a bit further around the lap than this. He overtook, but on the outside, off the circuit, back into fourth. Time, though, is not his friend. It's just uh, three and three quarter minutes remaining in this race. So, of course, third and fourth the places have swapped let's look back jake at how it happened well yes this is the opportune moment he's obviously gone right round the far side but there's not a lot of room left by brichet so as a result of that piano got through but he had to let him go again at la source on the next lap uh, just a few corners after that and that's why uh, they've given the positions back meanwhile toyota versus porsche here we go this is an interesting one because we've got Etienne Chili getting past Kronberg. He managed to get a good run off Kurt Paulfer, and I don't think he's going to be the only one because Ruben Del Sart in the Aston Martin fancies his chances of getting past Kronberg as well. Kronberg is moving to the middle of the road to cover it. He wants to still remain in the top six overall if he can. And there in front, you've got Piana all over the back of Richet. It's nearly three wide behind them. Who wants to be at the bottom end of the top ten? Well, nobody wants to be in the top end of the top ten, but the Borussia Automotive uh, BMW with uh, Berkay Bessler, the Turkish racer for the Turkish team, 
having a great go. One of the Allied Racing Porsches also getting into the mix down there. That should be Nathan Sharp, who actually started this stint well, but has been muscled out as the more experienced drivers have come through. So Bessler was able to go up into ninth position then, past the two Porsches of Lefterov and Sharp. So unfortunate for Nathan Sharp, the Allied Porsche that ran as high as fourth position, now tumbling all the way to 11th after that restart. Bessler under all sorts of pressure from Lefterov in the overdrive car as they come up the hill. Then there's Knurp. Gedig, Lachenauer, Villiger, Carton, Volder, Holman, Hersiger and Paulet. Still a fantastic run as they come up the top of the radion. And whenever you look at this battle, it might be late in the race, but getting four cars going through Eau Rouge and Radion together, you know the order's going to change when they get to the top of the Kettle Straight. And even down in about 30th position, we look at this batch here, 30th, 31st, you can see Audi versus Aston Ooh. Martin. With on the grass, why not? All four wheels, three and a half <laughs> wheels on the grass. Another Aston Martin having a look, and the Mercedes driver behind must have been thinking, you know, I might be about to make up a space. Oh my goodness, that was proper hearted mouth stuff as they came down the Kevel Strait with one car. I think it was the 18, completely on the grass as it did so. I tell you what, these guys definitely are risk takers. Yeah, well, his name is Marcus Longstrass. It might have been Marcus Longgrass there as he was out <laughs> on the grass on the outside. But they haven't finished racing. Doesn't matter if they're in the top 10, top 20, top 30. Fantastic race action. But look, one minute and 20 seconds remain until the chequered flag can be unfurled. So we have this lap and one further lap. But it's Ricardo van der Ende leading the race from Christoph Hamon. So that change at the front, Julian Briche. Lefterov and Cunio are still scrapping side by side for their position. This is for ninth place. Lefterov trying to go round the long way, has done so now on Cunio. Cunio made that the widest Audi in history to try and keep him back. But no, you're not going to hold him back at this point. And now Nathan Sharp and here comes Knopp in the Mercedes. That's Josef Knopp in the BWT Muka car desperately trying to work forward and as a result we've now got Yagis Gadik in the Boris and Automotive BMW trying to muscle in and he's got good pace in that BMW we know how fast that car is around here but there is Ricardo van der Ender and he is going to come across the line with about 20 seconds to spare on the clock so a fabulous drive from him here's Biana on the inside he's already got past Biche by the look of it now he squeezes Hamon at the apex and into second position beautifully done by Gabriele Biana Right, BMW from Zim, BMW, Ricardo van der Ende from Gabriele Piana. We've got four mates of car in the top five positions, just how we like it. I tell you what, we've got five in the top six, but it's BMW's first and second. But Christophe Hamon is not accepting defeat. He's leading Pro-Am, he's third overall, but he fancied second. He's going to see if he can get it back. And again, the move's being made down the hill. We're riding on board with Detti Ancelli in fifth place. Ride and enjoy. Is he going to have a dab up the inside of Rouge? I wouldn't suggest it. It's all about getting the toe. Once they've gone into the left, up to the right, over the brow of the hill, that's when he wants to get on the tail. He has to button precisely what he is doing. Oh, it's perfect. Perfect. He's going to have the two cars to his right. He'll certainly make no problem at all of Bichet. He should be able to continue it on Hamon, but Bichet comes across. He's too busy battling Hamon. So now Chili lines up behind Christophe Hamon in the Audi. Wait for it. Wait for it. Get the gap up the inside. But round the outside comes Bichet. No chance. You are going to have to work very much harder than that, Etienne, if you want to get past me, says Florian Bichet. Very good racing, all three of them just about kept it out of each other's quarter panel. Brichet protecting big time from Etienne Shelley. He does not want to lose the podium, but Shelley has a great chance of taking it away. The X Swift Toyota team full of confidence after their win last time out of Port Ricard. Now he has a chance to take a podium here at Spa, and Brichet is doing everything he can to avoid it. That last 30 seconds of onboard footage and the footage from outside is why these drivers don't go fishing at the weekend. They go racing on this brilliant circuit. GT4 just gives them such opportunity. Lots of different makes of cars, manufacturers in here. Lots of different levels, three classes, but uh, fabulous, fabulous racing. Third, fourth, fifth and sixth, nose to tail. That's Hamon, Briche, Celli, and I must say, Ruben Del Sart is coming on leaps and bounds Ooh. this year. Big twitch from Richet, that might just be enough to give Etienne Shelley the invitation. Right, you can't keep a hold of the back end of the car, but now neither can Shelley as he goes over the curb. This might be an opportunity for Rivendell Sartre to snatch the final place on the podium from both of them. But what a brilliant race it has been here at Spa-Francorchamps, the fifth race of the season in GT4 European Series, and we're going to have five car, different teams one, take the victory. Or track limits. Looks like track limits, penalty going the way of the treble one now as well. So that is uh, Cunio and Castelli. They will get a penalty. 
But this is going to go all the way to the finish line. Is out in front. Ricardo van der Ender in the BMW for Les Venue has done a fantastic job. The checkered flag flies. Benjamin Lesen and Ricardo van der Ender are the victors here at Spa. But it's not over. Ruben del Sart has dived in on the inside of Etienne Chili in the final bends of the race. He's going to take fourth position away from the Toyota in class. Brilliant racing. Gabriele Piana keeps their title fight on course in the Hoffa Bonk BMW by coming second. Brilliant race. Hamon picks up the win in Pro-Am. And who is going to get the AM victory? Well, surprise, surprise, even without the penalty, it's going to be Alban Veruti. Absolutely terrific. The winning Scandinavian car is going to be the 290. That is the Toyota Gazoo Racing Sweden car of Hans Holmland and Emil Skaras. And they are your class winners. What an amazing race battle. 54 cars were able to bring it to the finish line. But I tell you what, yet another thriller at spa Fragashon. May well still be some penalties to be applied, but I think we can safely say Ricardo van der Ender in the 117 Lespas Bienvenue. BMW started outside the top 10 and worked its way forward, 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 and got the job done. In fact, started 11th on the grid, but a great race for them. Remember, we had 60 cars start this race, just doing the numbers at the moment, and I think we're going to get more than 50 home. That is quite an accolade. Then again, they know they've got to do it all over again tomorrow. Yep, 52 cars crossed the finish line in the end. The last one home, rather sadly, was Alex Denning in the McLaren. They obviously managed to get the bonnet off the car and managed to send him back out again just to see what would happen, maybe to get some more data ready ahead of tomorrow. But fabulous. The L'Espace Bienvenue BMW becomes the fifth different team to win a race in 2023. The different brands run is over because that's the second BMW win of the year. But it's certainly five different crews winning races in the first five races of the season. Do you want any motorsport to be any closer than that, any more open than that? I'm not sure you can get it much more open than that. GT4, the European series, has grown and grown. The concept over the last decade has got wings. It's global now, but uh, here is the ultimate shop window for them. We had a fabulous race when it was more like a swimming pool at Pori Car, but here, with the majesty of the spa francorchamps circuit, with that thing that always makes the track brilliant, lots of different manufacturers, but that makes the field great, but it's the gradient change and the possibility where you can take an overtaking maneuver that lasts for about three corners. You gain, you lose, and you've got to just keep in the race. But uh, some great runs at the end. Berkai Bessler kept working his way up the order. Well, give him another lap. He could have been in the top five. He got up to seventh. But uh, the BMWs first and second. Ricardo van der Ender and Gabriel Piana. Bear in mind, both those cars at some stage in this race were outside the top ten. So job very well done. I mentioned Jake, of course. It's about having a good driver pairing. It's one thing having a very quick driver, but it's about the pace of both of you. And of course, all, these, all this field uh, had to withstand two safety car periods as well, which really upsets the, the sort of flow and, uh, of a race. But uh, for those who kept it cool and also mastered the restarts, we certainly saw some teams gaining very much because their driver was wide awake. But it's all part of the experience. But what a fantastic spark start to the weekend here. It certainly was. We've had the Temple of Speed at Monza. We've had the flat and wide open ice rink of Paul Ricard. And now we've had the ultimate roller coaster of Spa. And this has definitely been a very exciting run. Congratulations to Christophe Hamon for coming home to get the Pro-Am victory. And they were third overall. They can be very happy indeed with that. An excellent job from the Pro-Am Cup winners, Gilbert and Hamon. And they will park the car on the main straight by the look of it. Oh, no, they will come back to the uh, endurance pit lane. My apologies. But they, these guys actually do get a uh, parade lap around at the end of the day. Every other race that has taken place so far they come straight back to the pits. Here is the provisional results then. It is L'Espace Bienvenue at the front of the field. The Hofferbank BMW continues its run to the title in second position. Big points for them. Then third overall, the winners in Pro-Am, Santadoc Junior team for Gilbert and Hamon. Day and Del Sart in the Mirage Aston. Then Botti and Chili in the X-Whip Racing Toyota. Edgar and Bessler, great fight back to the top six. Bostanchev and Lefterov in the overdrive Porsche, the WNS Porsche of Stil and Kronberg. And then further down, you can see Alban Veruti coming home 20th overall as the leading car in the AM category. A fabulous run all the way through. Very close battles for the second place run in the AM category as well. That 10 second penalty meant that Hergon and Ferte were only able to keep hold of that second position by five hundredths of a second. So they were very lucky there. Jimenez and Grizo finishes the podium in the GPA racing Aston Martin. 
and the Scandinavian teams gave us plenty of excitement. Gulberg and Nielsen finishing off behind the 290 that took the victory in the Scandinavian car. That is the Toyota Gazoo Racing Sweden machine. And third home was the second of the Toyota Gazoo Racing Sweden cars of Hedberg and Hackberg, who managed to come home in 49th overall. Not everybody managed to make it to the flag. You can see a decent list of retirements built up. Bruce and Behrens in the Alpha McLaren, the Speed Car Audi, the Century Porsche to the Ticino Porsche. We had an Aston gone, two more Porsches, a Bramchick in the Audi on the opening lap. Samad Timor in the Alpine didn't get to take the start. Track limits will continue to be reviewed after the race, but what a race it was, and a great, great start to the race weekend. For these guys, it's a brilliant Pro-Am victory. Pole position turned into third overall, and a win in Pro-Am. They can be very satisfied indeed with that in a very competitive field of cars. So let's hear from Gregory Gilbert and Christophe Hamon, who is down in the pit lane with Gemma Scott, no doubt will be very happy with their prime victory here at Spa. Gregory, that was a difficult end to the race, with the pressure certainly on for Christophe. Talk me through your stint, first of all. Yes, uh, to be honest, uh, the Audi in second parts of the race, yeah, it's always difficult with, with the Audi. But yeah, he did a really good job after the safety car. He, he takes the lead, so yeah, he's really, uh, I'm really, yeah, happy about uh, what he's doing uh, about uh, this race. So no, really happy about the final result. Congratulations, fini en troisième. C'était super, et vous avez travaillé super bien, quoi. Oui, après, je n'ai pas fait beaucoup de tours. Nous, quand on est pilote, on a vraiment envie de beaucoup rouler. Mais euh, voilà, Greg avait fait le boulot euh, dans le premier euh, relais. Au restart, je m'amuse un petit peu. Je passe, le, je passe la tête, on, on passe en tête. Voilà, après, j'ai eu une alarme à la fin, ce qui m'a fait louper l'entrée le, de, de pit lane. Une alarme, ça m'a déconcentré. Mais bon, on est là, voilà, on a gagné, c'est très bien. Bravo, félicitations. Merci. Just a little translation for the uh, English fans uh, to say what a difficult race it was. But Gregory doing the hard work in the first part of the stint, of course, and then uh, Christophe taking over. Uh, he didn't get too many laps in as he'd like to have done. And he had an alarm sounding in the car that sort of put him off a little bit towards the end. But uh, certainly a fantastic result and very, very happy. The Espace Bienvenue BMW comes home. This is their first race of the season in GT4 European Series. And they've taken the win. How about that? Yeah, joy unbounded there, Sir Ricardo van der Ende, still with the helmet on, but certainly ready to get up close to us and the camera, Benjamin Lassen. He did a lot of fancy hard charging, but what a pair. So look out, everyone. That's uh, five different winners in five races. And a very special win as well for Benjamin Lassen at his home circuit, one of the greatest race circuits in the world. It's a very special thing when a Belgian wins at Spa, because this race is tough to tame, even for the locals. So a very nice moment indeed for the drivers. They are having such a party that's already begun. We've got a podium still to do. So let's hear from Benjamin Lassen and Ricardo van der Ender down in the pits with Gemma Scott. Benjamin, Ricardo, fantastic result for you there. A, fun, a great win for you at your home circuit. Yeah, exactly. I'm really happy to be here in Spa. Uh, normally we are doing the French Championship and I said to the boss, boss, we need to come here in Spa. It's for my birthday, so it's so nice. We enjoyed and we had a very nice race. And thanks to BMW for the very nice car. Well, happy birthday to you as well Thank for this you. weekend. Ricardo, I bet you were glad you were up front at the end and not part of the battle behind you. Were you aware of what was going on? No, after the safety car, we always keep our tires alive and we just go. And when you're in front, you don't look back. When you know you've got the speed. But let's be honest, I'm so in love with this team and with this car, with Empower. We had a great race, so salut à la maison. Felicitations, bravo, thank you, well done. When it works, it just works naturally, organically, beautifully. What these guys are producing with this car, not just them, but also the honk for BMW team as well, the bonk for BMW team. It's just turning on the dial in 2023. It really is, but very wide, wise words there from Ricardo van der Ende. I said he's got the speed, he had the experience. He just explained how he kept his tyres alive. And on the restart, we saw the JSB competition, Aston Martin. I said he hadn't got, kept the heat in his tyres and clearly he hadn't. He almost slid off at the bus stop at the restart and then was flummoxed. But that comes down. You get, you've got the speed, you gain the experience and you use it. And Ricardo van der Ende has been doing this in the BMW for about the past decade. He knows what he's up to. And certainly, once they moved across the M4, he's really making it fly. 
What a fabulous guest appearance on Benjamin Lassen's birthday as well. Joyeux anniversaire, uh, Benjamin. But what a fabulous victory. And that really does show you how competitive you've got to be to take on the regulars. But the GT4 European Series is one of the most competitive championships in the world for motorsport, never mind for GT racing. So to come through for a victory, it really does mean something when you're battling with 59 other crews with fantastic competition, with great race cars around you. It's a tough old sport and it's a very tough game out there. So to come through for the podium is an achievement. To come through for the win when you haven't even competed in the first four races of the year, that's more than just admirable. Yeah, to do that starting 11th overall. And as we saw, people actually, the first lap, we have to take our hats off. We had two fallers and that was it out of 60 cars. But that opportunity to be a hero or possibly a zero going to La Source, the very first corner, but they kept it neat, kept it tidy. And that was one of the cars. It took several laps to get it into its stride. Let's pass Banff in you. But that is because Benjamin Descent wasn't taking risks. And uh, it certainly paid off as he then picked his way up the order. We almost forget at this point, we had the two safety car periods, which for the quicker drivers, that's a chance that limits their opportunity. But it was about keeping it sweet. And as we saw, taking the restart in third place and then driving through, it was uh, a phenomenal move. But uh, let's go down because uh, the AM crew, Laurent Ergon and Alain Ferté are with Gemma. Laurent Alain, c'était un super course. You've won the AM class there in that race. Vous avez gagné les catégories AM. Oui, oui, oui. C'est pas facile. C'était pas facile parce que bah, devant ça. Après le safety car, c'était la guerre. Donc j'ai laissé faire la guerre. Et puis, euh, et puis voilà quoi. De toute façon, on avait pris une pénalité a priori dans les dans les stands. Donc euh, c'est bien tout qu'on finisse deuxième. On marque des points. <laughs> just saying there of course that it wasn't easy at all with the safety car and uh, with the penalty as well but uh même c'est un super résultat oui oui on est vraiment très content euh, moi j'ai fait une petite faute j'ai oublié d'appuyer sur le pit limiteur quand je suis rentré dans la pit là je m'en suis aperçu j'ai roulé trop vite je l'ai dit au stand j'ai dit ah, les gars je suis désolé j'ai oublié d'appuyer et euh, on a voilà on a on, on savait qu'on avait 10 secondes de pénalité Alain il a fait le nécessaire pour essayer de garder le gap sur le deuxième arme Ça n'a pas été facile, on a, été, on, a eu, on a eu du mal, mais on a quand même pris du plaisir, c'était sympa. Et puis de rouler sur le circuit de Spa Francorchon, ça reste toujours un, un vrai plaisir. Donc euh, on est déjà content d'être là, c'est top. Évidemment, félicitations. Rendez-vous à demain. Rendez-vous demain, we see you tomorrow. Congratulations, boys. <laughs> Laurent just saying that it's his fault for the uh, penalty for getting to uh, press the pit lane limiter as he came in. But uh, a great result, and we'll see them tomorrow. Yes, indeed, that penalty, of course, docks them down to second position in uh, the AM Cup. But we'll have that podium a little bit later on. Alban Veruti makes it yet another astonishing victory. That's five wins out of five now for the Avatar Porsche. This is one of the beauties of GT4 European, all GT4 racing. You have the multi-class element. It's very easy to focus on the front of the race, the top 10, as it was. We had a lot of Pro-Am crews in there, but the AM battle often goes a little bit under the radar, but you look for it, and it was so close. It turned on a penalty in the end. So for Alain Ferté, his gun was spiked a little bit, but he'll be back. He, he might be quite deep into his 60s now, but he's still got the love for the racing. That was clear to hear. So the podium ceremonies are going to take place next and that will close out the day for GT4 European Series. The first podium, of course, is going to be for the Pro-Am category. They will come out first and uh, it's going to be three different brands on the podium there as well. So uh, fabulous stuff indeed for them because we're going to have uh, the Santa Doc Junior team that took the overall pole position at the start. They weren't quite able to hold on for the overall victory, but they certainly came home third uh, overall, which is uh, good enough for the win. Uh, the next car behind them, of course, was the WNS Motorsport Porsche, uh, captained by Max Kronberg over the line. They were eighth overall, and then the Code Alpine of uh, Leclerc and Villiger uh, coming home in third place. There they are. So here comes the crew. Loic Villiger and Antoine Leclerc in the Code Racing Alpine number 36 in third position. And then it is Max Kronberg and Henrik Stiel coming home in second place. But there they are, Gregory Gilbert and Christophe Hamon. They converted pole position overall and in class into a brilliant, brilliant victory. So La Marseillaise rings out over Spa-Francorchamps. 
as the Santa Luc Junior team takes the victory in fine style in Pro-Am. It really was a masterful performance as Julia Martinez of the Rafa Racing Club will present the trophies to our competitors in the Pro-Am Club. But what a fabulous performance from Gilbert and Hamon. They just never looked anywhere but on the pace all the way through the race. Uh, more than that, they were in there contending, contending for outright victory until those two BMWs came through. They could be very, very proud of that. They also worked very well through those safety car restarts. Always a complication. Uh, but for them, for Audi, victory. And another one in the pot for Santa Luc Junior team. They really do know their craft. They seem to be absolutely perfect in race one, don't they? It's only in race two when things come apart. And Messrs Villiger and Leclerc, they have just taken their first third position of the season. They will want to bounce back with a third win of the year in race two tomorrow. So watch out for the Go Alpine. They're going to be trying desperately to get back into contention once again in the Prime Cup. But as the bubbly flies over Circuit de Spa-Francorchamps, it's a fabulous result and a great performance from the Santa Loc Junior team. Great job. Drivers will have to do it all over again tomorrow, being a Spa-Francorchamps. We can't tell you as yet what the weather might be, but there we had 60 cars going out to play, and play they did on the world's greatest circuit in perfect conditions. You can't argue with that. Yeah, I think it's very hard when you look at all of the world's great racing circuits. Spa is absolutely on most racing drivers, number one or at least top five racing circuits on the planet. There's something so magical about this place. And uh, right from Wednesday evening when they came here for the Spa 24 Hours Parade and the GT4 cars were part of that, of course, as well. It was a fabulous, fabulous moment, I'm sure, for every driver involved in that one. A very special moment indeed. Yeah, absolutely brilliant photos showing the public getting up so close. It's just and it's such a great drive down. People not just staying down in the town of Spa to wait for the cars, but lining the route the whole way down past the airfield, the whole way down the long, long drive into Spa, Frank, to Spa from Francorchamps. But uh, great. And now the second podium. And great to see the faces coming out. And of course, it's a podium in third position for Ruben Del Sartre and Jamie Day on the third rung of the podium. Fabulous run for them in the Mirage Aston. A great performance from Gabriele Piana and Michael Schrey, championship leaders, and they pick up a second place. Very important for them. They definitely deserve that. But on the top spot, Benjamin Lissen and Ricardo van der Ende, the L'Espace Bienvenue BMW, their first appearance in the GT4 European Series, having raced in the French Championship all season long, and they top the podium here at spa francorchamps That's a big, big moment for the guest team. And of course, we're also going to see the top rookie team on the podium, and that is the Allied Porsche, I do believe, of Nathan Sharp and Alexander Hartwig. So for the second time, La Marseillaise plays out. But this wasn't just a good victory. This was a great victory between Ricardo and Benjamin. They've done a fantastic job. From 11th on the grid, it's not easy to mix it. But as you mentioned before, Bruce, it's all about tyre management. As Peter Curran from Pirelli gives out the trophies, it's how you handle those boots on the restart that makes every advantage count. Absolutely so, Jake. But one of the things that really striking me, we're having a bit of stirring the pot. We've got different driver lineups in third position overall, fourth on the track, but third in, in Silver Cup class. Jamie Day and Ruben Del Sartre, new pairing this weekend. And near Aston Martin, they look very, very good. More of them later this season, I feel. Well, why not tomorrow? I completely agree. Jamie Day, who's uh, cut his teeth in the karting and single-seater worlds out in the United Arab Emirates, and Ruben Del Sartre, who's been working his way through the European route as well. Fabulous job, and uh, a great performance from all of the contenders up there on the podium. An excellent display and a great performance all the way through. Really exciting battles uh, from the contenders as they now get to celebrate in fine style on the podium. Unfortunately, the second place team didn't want to party. The winners do, and they've absolutely earned every single drop.
And looking at the rookie up there, Alexander Hartvig, he's probably not old enough to party like that as yet, <laughs> or maybe he's only got one set of overalls. But for the winners, of course, birthday boy uh, Benjamin Lassen with Ricardo van der Ender. You can see the joy, fight of the cameras. That's Ricardo van der Ender, quick in the car and a showman out of it. But it's about delivering it. 59 crews finished behind them. That's all you need to know. Very true indeed. So we have uh, three more crews coming up to the podium for the AM category. And it's been a very interesting one in the AM category, as it has been all season long, of course, because the crew that came across the line first uh, was the worthy winner on that one, Alba Varuti, the AVR Avatar Porsche, for the fifth race in a row they claimed the winner's trophy. But how about this team? They've done a fantastic job of returning to the podium. Florent Grisot and Julien, uh, sorry, Kevin Jimenez in the GPA, Aston Martin. And then, of course, Messrs. Hergon and Ferté. Experience and enthusiasm. Second position. They've done an amazing job to continue this great run for the Autosport Alpine. But the Lone Ranger returns to the top spot. Alba Veruti. Everything he touches in 2023 in the GT4 European Series Am Cup turns to gold. He really is the King Midas of GT4's Am Cup. Well, he can't blame his teammate. He doesn't have a teammate uh, since the opening round of the season. He's doing everything right. Just to update you on the remaining finishers in the AM category, the Century Porsche Ticino was in fourth place for Ivan Giacomo, the WD BMW in fifth, and the Shazai Technology Course Alpine of Jean-Paul Domenici in sixth position. The overdrive Porsche of Ivailo Zonev, unfortunately, suffering damage and couldn't bring it home. Julia Martinez of the Rafa Racing Club presents the trophies to our top three crews. And for Alban Veruti on the top spot, he has been unbeaten in the AM Cup this season. Four wins out of four becomes five out of five, and he has the chance to go to the sixth race of the season tomorrow, having won 50% of the season at its completion. That is an incredible possibility. So the AM Cup continues on its way. The final podium ceremony, of course, comes from our guests in the GT4 Scandinavia Pro-Am category. They've been very competitive, I have to say, both here and at Paul Ricard. It's been wonderful to greet them uh, to this uh, particular weekend. But, of course, they've obviously had an interesting challenge in the Scandinavia Pro-Am Cup. It's going to be the... Mercedes team that came home in second place, the RMS Mercedes AMG crew of uh, Kala Ward and Hakan Riknas. Uh, they will be the second crew. And then the winning crew is the race team Gerarasan by AFR Porsche, that of Patrick Skug and Gustav Bard. And it's nice to see, this is really the real reason why the GT4 Scandinavia paddock has been given the invitation here, because it's been nice to see how that they can stay as competitive as the GT4 European campaign. There is the AM points coming up to this point. Alba Veruti, a full 36 clear of Ferté and Hergon going into race two tomorrow. Yeah, and scoring those top two, top two positions today to build on what's gone before. That means those two are coming through. So our GT4 Scandinavian crews, part of the overall show here, and a good number of them came down to compete here at spa Francorchamps. And indeed, why not? So yep. Up onto the podium they go with Toyota winning the day. So it'll be Daniel Nielsen and Otto Gulberg that take the third position spot for the Otto Racing crew. For the second crew across the line, it is, of course, the MBLR BMW squad of uh, Joachim Valder and Victor Bouveng, and then the Toyota Gazoo Racing Sweden crew of Emil Skaras and Hans Holmland that come through for the victory. It's Michaela Bjorkman, the GT4 Scandinavia director assistant, that hands the winning trophy to the winning crew on the top of the podium. And Holland and Skadas doing a fantastic job at Spa Frangachon as they continue their fabulous season guesting here in the GT4 European Series. But let's sum up race one. Fabulous racing all the way through despite the interruptions of full course yellow and safety cars. 
but a thrilling battle. BMW definitely the brand to have, and five different crews taking the victory in the first five races of the GT4 European Series. It means that in the Prime category, Gilbert and Hamel are now 20 points clear of Leclerc and Villiger, with the battle for third still raging between Stil and Kronberg and the Brichets. Uh, further back with Lundstrasse and Stegman in the top five of points as well. But a Bramchik and Wozniak, their retirement on the opening lap, that's hampered them big time. It has. You have to keep scoring and scoring big in this championship. But Gilbert Hamon up there, third overall. Fabulous for them. Started on pole position, but to come home in the top three in a Pro-Am driver lineup, full marks to them. Yes, you might say the safety car helped them, but it didn't hinder them either. So here we have the Scandinavian GT4 Am top two. Only two finishes in class. And the national anthem. So Patrick Skug and Gustav Bard in the Gellerus and Porsche come home in second position, but it's the RMS Mercedes AMG of Gala Ward and Hakan Riknas that go through on the top step of the podium in the GT4 Scandinavian AM category. Great to see them in fantastic fashion once again. And a great end to a fabulous day at the races here at Spa Fragachon in GT4. We will round it up, though, by giving you a bit of an update in the points standings in just a few short moments' time and uh, give you a bit of a, a refresher in terms of the Silver Cup because obviously the win for the Bienvenue Essence team. It doesn't change much in terms of the championship fight for them because this is their first appearance. However, they go straight up to eighth in the standings. But the big one is Piana and Shrey. Their second place stretches them further away. Shelley and Potty now come up to second in the championship. 56 points for them. Bessler and Edgar, solid and consistent. 52 points for them, now third in the championship. Larish and Consani losing out points big time. And of course, the absence of the Vulgencio and Lenez from the top points definitely costs them big time as well. And so Ricardo van der Ender and Benjamin Lassen straight into the top 10 in eighth place through victory as guest drivers. Well, let's take a look back to the start of the race. 60 cars started, 60 cars got through last source, but it was the Aston Martin of uh, Julian Brichet from the outside of the front row, cutting across the nose of Christophe Hamon to take the lead. Look how neat and tidy, staying between the white lines, like very good colouring in at school. Well done. It was a very exciting opening to the race here at Spa-Francorchamps. Unfortunately, it wasn't to last. At the very end of the lap, we had two or three separate incidents which put several cars out of the race, including Noam Abramchik. In terms of the battle for the Silver Cup, that's definitely hampered them. A short safety car, and then a fantastic battle between Shrey and Potty as they battled away down the run to Eau Rouge. How they kept it out of the wall is anybody's guess. Of course, the key was getting a good exit to the corner, but to get the exit, you've got to go into the corner and a little further down the order. Side-by-side -side contact, and very fortunate indeed. It was a case of people coming forward, and certainly uh, Michael Schrey was making very good progress at that point in the race. They had a few moments all on their own, taking the act exit road at Le Yep, Yeah, Hoffman lost it in the Porsche. That brought us under safety car. And then Brichet, unable to keep the tyres hot, eventually losing out. First to one BMW, then for two. But the racing in GT4 has been exceptional all the way. We have new winners, a fifth different crew. The championship's still going well for Shrey and Biana, but for Lessen and Van der Ender, they become the fifth different crew to win in 2023. There's another race tomorrow, but from myself, Jake Stanton, and my colleague, Bruce Jones, Spa has been brilliant on Friday night.